Tuesday, we start with barbell skull crushers, just like dad did them, just like grandpa did them. You guys remember those photos your, your grandpa showed you from the um, Civil War? Uh-huh. Your great grandpa was doing skull crushers in that motherfucker. Hey guys, try some. Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isertel here for Renaissance Periodization. Today's topic is to talk to you about a tricep growth program. The triceps are an interesting muscle. They do a couple of really cool things. One is they look enormous. Mine aren't so pumped right now, but uh, they make your arm look really big because they're like, oh, two thirds the size of your arm or two thirds of your uh, upper arm volume is really triceps. So a lot of people say arms and biceps, they use those terms interchangeably. But if you have small triceps, your biceps look cool. And people are like, yes, somehow your biceps are cool. You don't have big arms. How does that work? Triceps, if they're big, your arms are big. So that's cool. Also, you know, it's great to have people close to you in your life, but sometimes you need to push people away. And how would you do that if not with overly developed triceps? So you got some toxicity in your life. Grandma's getting on your nerves. Give her a little gentle push away with your jack triceps, but you don't have jack triceps, which is why you're watching this video. To find out how to get them, let's get started. First of all, why not just train normally and then triceps will get bigger? Why specialize? Well, First of all, you can train normally and your triceps will probably continue to get bigger. There's a couple of good reasons to specialize. One is you just like want your triceps to be bigger in relation to the rest of your body as it is now. Because if you especially don't have like genetically gifted triceps, let's say they're average. As you gain weight and you go from 180 to 190 to 200, let's say, over the course of multiple years, putting on that much muscle, your triceps will be big for... 180, big for 190, big for 200, but they won't be huge for any of those, so they'll never stand out. But if you want your triceps to stand out, then you have to take them above and beyond, and that is what specialization is good for. In addition to that, you can reduce how much work you do for other muscles, increasing how much work you do for the triceps because you're uh, then giving them much more recovery bandwidth, and then you can get them even bigger, even faster, because when you slow down other muscles and speed up the triceps, you get double the effect of the triceps beginning to overpower their previous position in your physique, which is sweet. Because when you have big triceps, you can push grandma away. Get out of here, grandma. I'm watching basketball tonight on the TV. No, no more of your stupid cooking shows. You know what? I feel even bad saying that. You shouldn't say things like that to grandma. Watch the cooking show with grandma. Maybe make her something on the cooking show. She'd love that. So can you train everything normally and then stack your more triceps training on top of that? Potentially, yes but you may get better results by reducing how much you do with other stuff. And that may actually get you better gains. How much of the other stuff do you pull away? And can you prioritize triceps and chest and back and legs all at the same time? The answer to that is you have to see how much you can recover from. So if you're prioritizing a certain number of muscles, which means training them more than usual, if you try to add in one more to the priority, you might be like, holy crap, this is way too much. I can't recover. I can't train very hard and this isn't working. And then you have the answer to your question of, can I train triceps and chest and blah, 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 blah. So what I would say is start to train. You're probably training all of your muscle groups normally right now. Great. Keep doing that. And what you can do is take away one of the muscles. Let's say a muscle you don't really care about for a while. Let's say your back is really well developed. You're like, eh, I'm going to put my back at maintenance volume, just like five sets or six sets a week for back two sessions, two or three sets each, and then see how much that affects your other muscle group training. And if that really improves other muscle groups because it really gives you a ton of fatigue bandwidth to recovery bandwidth to play with, awesome. If that doesn't change things much and you can actually increase your volume for everything else without a, a huge effect, amazing. If that changes something, but you're like, man, I bought me a little bit of recovery room, but not much, then you need to take other things and put them on the back burner. Eventually, folks that either don't have a ton of time to train or really advanced bodybuilders, be only be able to prioritize maybe about half their body at one time while putting the other on the back burner. And that's just something you're going to have to auto-regulate, trial and error to see which one is good for you. So when we say specialization, when you sell, tell somebody, hey, I'm specializing on triceps in the, in the next couple of months, what does that mean that we think you're doing? Or in other words, what should you be doing to really earn the title of I'm specializing on this? Because a lot of people, when they say, they don't use the term specializing. You get to the gym, you see one of your gym buddies, you know, people you don't speak to outside of the gym, but only in the gym. And they're like, what's your Insta? And you're like, I, I don't have one. Even though you do, you'll just lie to them. A lot of times they'll say, yeah, man, I'm really trying to bring up my triceps. And we have to be very clear intellectually, 
trying to bring up your triceps and doing a specialization program for your triceps can be two different things. Although the more scientifically and logically minded of us watching this may assume that they're the same thing. Because if you said to someone, hey, I really want to bring up my triceps, you know, ostensibly you would be trying to do something about it in an organized, logical fashion. But sometimes people don't think like that. When they say, I want to bring up my triceps, it's just a desire they're expressing. And what they might do is at the end of their typical tricep work or push work or upper body work or whatever, they'll do a couple more sets of like rope cable extensions and really feel a fucking, yeah, yeah, I feel it right here. And that's what they call specialization, but that is not specialization. So what is specialization? It's a couple of things. First, you have to check the box of specificity. You have to choose exercises that you know from prior experience or are best guessing in a looking forward manner are your best bets for the triceps. They have the best stimulus, hopefully the lowest fatigue, at least the biggest stimulus. Like if someone put a gun to your head and said, you better design a program that trains your triceps as much as possible and gets them as big as possible in the next two months, you had better be picking certain exercises over others. You don't want to pick dips when you know dips are shit for your triceps. You don't want to pick overhead extensions when you know in your personal experience, they don't do a whole lot for you. And you sure as hell don't want to do close grip benches if you're like, ah, truthfully, that exercise really just trains my chest. But it's nominally a tricep exercise, so I'm going to put it down. Uh, 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 you got a gun to your head. You better choose all the best ones. So you want to choose the best exercises that really you know are your best guess at what stimulates that muscle the most. Now, if you're very well-educated and very long-time training um, or, or trainer involved in training, you are not really making guesses anymore. You're making pretty solidified, like I know for a fact, these four exercises are going to nuke me. If you are very new to the process, you're making guesses, but that's okay. You make educated guesses based on, oh, you know, I did dips before and they felt amazing. Oh, I'll do dips again. Right. Another one is modalities. Let's say you find that low rep straight sets have worked really well for your biceps. Let's say you find that drop sets have worked well for your biceps. Meyer reps, even occlusion training. You put an occlusion band here and do extensions. Maybe that has worked well for your biceps. You want to pick the modalities that work the best. Right? Because sometimes, let's say you want to uh, train your triceps and make them bigger. Someone could say, yeah, man, sets of five, that's the best thing. And you read that in an article somewhere, except sets of five for you just make your elbows hurt and they don't do anything to your triceps. That's not the best modality for you. So if you include it into a program, you're not making a serious attempt at specialization. So anytime you make a specialization program, remember, we're sort of like putting all our best forces at the front lines here to really make a huge impact. And that we're going to want modalities like rep ranges, et cetera, that are, are types of training that really work. Similar with rep ranges. If you know that sets of 20 to 30 really just fry your triceps like nothing else, but you make a tricep specialization program that has lots of sets of 5 to 10, somebody could ask you, why are you doing this? And you'd be like, well, it's important to train heavy, right? Like, no, that's not what the literature says at all. It's important to train through a variety of rep ranges, but biased to the ones in which you get the best effect. And so sometimes that means really objectively analyzing your training. And be like, okay, I'm going to be totally honest. Even though I like to train triceps heavy, I know I don't get shit out of it. My triceps get strong, they don't get big. Anytime my triceps have gotten a lot bigger, it's been through, let's say, sets of 15 to 20. Then that's a lot of what I'm going to do. Not all, but a lot of what I'm going to do. All right? So you got to be very good with the specificity so that your program looks like a very serious attempt to grow your triceps. In addition to that, the idea of prioritization has to thread through your program. If you really want to make a biggest impact on a muscle, it is a very good idea to train that muscle when you're very low in systemic fatigue, when you have high mental energy, so you can really put that muscle through its paces. And of course, low fatigue in other muscles that could prevent that muscle from being recruited super well. What that means is you want to train triceps first or very early in many of your days through the week if you're seriously attempting to grow triceps. So for example, if I train upper, lower, upper, lower, four days a week, and I'm like, I want fucking bigger triceps. On the upper days, I had better be starting either some kind of pushing movement, which trains the triceps pretty well, and then some extensions right after, or even extensions first, and then a pushing movement or something like that. If I'm saying, like my earlier example, if I want bigger triceps, but I save my you know, three sets of cable uh, extensions, rope pushdowns for the end of the workout, which you was, you know, I'm so tired at that point that the percent of my tricep total recruitment I can reach using my very tired brain is now some fraction of the total. Whereas if I show up and train triceps first or train them second, man, I can really fucking fry them up. So that at the end of multiple months of trying to train triceps, I can tell myself very uh, convincingly that I really tried as hard as I could. And there's no way to really try harder in any meaningful extent. In addition, frequency is a big deal. If I had a dollar for the number of people that said, yeah, I'm trying to bring up XYZ muscle, but they train it once a week, I'd have, you know, at least $10. I'm just kidding. I would have more than that. This is so common. But 
the reality is all, almost all the l- literature says, especially in the short and medium term, weeks to months, if you want to improve a muscle group, you have to trade it with a, a higher frequency than you normally do, right? Unless you train with a very high frequency already. But we're not talking about one time a week for triceps. We're talking about two times a week at least, and usually three to four times a week. Can you sustain three to four times a week tricep training hard for months and months and months? No, but you don't have to because the specialization phase can only last eight weeks and then you have much bigger triceps, but your elbow's starting to feel a little weird. So you go back to two times a week and everything's gravy. Your elbows heal, everything goes back to normal. And we're making sort of uh, intentionally unsustainable pushes, right? Like if if you're in a war, for example, an old World War, World War II style conflict, you push you know, your tank divisions across the front lines in a sort of unsustainable push. But then whatever land you grab and it was a 24 hours, you sort of start running out of fuel. You put up new defensive barriers in front of your tanks, you park them, and then you get resupplied right after that. Right? You don't have to say, hey, like, we're going on tank battle. Better better go all the way to Berlin with this one. Like, I don't know. Berlin's really far away. We don't have to make it that far. We just have to make it 20 miles and then stop and then put up a defensive uh, posture and then hopefully hold and, and come back in. Same with triceps. You don't have to look at your triceps. After eight weeks of training three times a day and be like, fuck, they're a lot bigger, but my elbows hurt. Well, that's okay because then you can pull back. And here's this super, super important thing that I have to say, which you, many of you may already know, but if you don't, this will be a big insight for you. Maintaining the size of a muscle is a trillion times, uh, mildly exaggeratory, is a lot easier and takes way less effort than getting a muscle to be bigger. It actually, the analogy for combat holds uh, 100%. Uh, the uh, offending army, the army on offense, typically is down to like a, a, a one to three advantage or something like that with the defending force. Defending force has the advantage. So what that means is if you grab some land, you can hold it a lot easier than you can take it. So it's okay to do a whole shitload of unsustainable stuff to take land. And then once you're holding it and it's stable, take some of the forces and supplies away from that and put them in other parts of the front. Same with triceps, same with anything is it's okay to go three times a week and hammer the shit out of your triceps, but then to maintain that new mass only go twice a week or even once a week to train triceps and they'll be perfectly fine and perfectly stable. There's this huge illusion in much of training that what you did to get there is what you need to do to maintain there. That's, I struggle to find an instance in which that's actually true outside of like, Fuck, maybe, maybe nothing. Right? Even if you're talking about some very linear process, like you're swimming upstream in a river, you swim, you know, 500 meters upstream, and then you're asked to continue to swim upstream, but not move at all. Just stay where you are. Yeah, that requires a whole lot more effort than staying where you are in a river that's not flowing against you, but it's still minus the velocity added for when you swam in. So it's still easier. But in the training, it's way, 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 way easier. It's not even close. I would think about it probably much more like, uh, you know, like if you got rich at some point, how easy is it to stay rich? Well, unless you do something really stupid and you have a decent financial plan, it's not that hard. It's certainly not nothing, but it's way easier than getting rich in the first place. And you guys know I'm all about getting rich on this fucking channel. I'm uh, see how my stocks are doing. Huh, really good. I got stocks on my watch. It just says like Dow Jones. NASDAQ, it's the stuff like the green, red. It's got all those things, you know, it doesn't have any of those things. I have no idea how my stocks are doing, to be honest. Scott, is the stock market, uh, what's it, what's it doing? Bad. That means buy more, stupid motherfuckers. Always buy, always buy. Whereas they say in Brazil, Bitcoin. All right. Bitcoin aside, higher frequency more prioritization, training the muscle first and training the muscle with all the best weapons. And if we want to take a really serious approach, we could actually reduce other training to make sure that our recovery for our triceps goes really, really well, which can mean that we reduce the volume a little bit for all the other muscle groups. Or if you're really, really serious and you really need to just uncork the tricep training, you may reduce synergist muscles more than others so that the triceps get the least fatigue possible from other muscle training in which they're used. For example, you use your shit out of your triceps when you're training chest and often when you're training front front delts with presses. So if you want your triceps to be fresh most of the time and really trained hard and not be asked to do more work where their recovery is impinged, 
it probably behooves you to reduce your chest training volume significantly if you really want to make a big push for triceps. Can it be possible to prioritize chest and triceps at the same time? Yes, but that means you can't get maximum growth for either one of them. You could do really well, but not maximum. So when you're constructing your specialized tricep training plan, how do we take all the stuff we just learned and put it in? Well, we have some recommendations for frequency. I would consider training the triceps three or four times a week. I would start with twice a week. And if that goes well, the next mesocycle, the next month or so of training, I would increase to three times a week. And if that goes well, consider increasing to four before pulling back and going back to maintenance. As far as positioning in the week, I would train the triceps right before chest, right? So let's say you have a chest and tricep day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That means the first couple exercises are triceps. The second couple are chest. I know what you're thinking. But Dr. Mike, how am I supposed to get my chest jacked if my chest is being trained after my triceps are already tired? Won't the triceps limit my chest from growing as much as possible? Absolutely, fucking lutely they will limit. But that's okay because you're prioritizing triceps, not chest. Another alternative is to train your triceps hard the day after a very easy chest day, which means that the chest has barely been disrupted and it's not fatiguing and it's not limiting factor for that tricep work after. And it's right after that easy chest day, you train triceps, which means the triceps have multiple days to go until chest is being trained hard again. Because you don't want to train triceps really hard Monday and then Tuesday train chest really hard because your sore triceps will prevent your chest from being trained as hard as you can. And that extra training could potentially interfere with their recovery and their growth. So you really want to cool it and spread out your triceps such that there's a big pulsatility. They're fresh and then they get plenty of time to heal. They're fresh and they get plenty of time to heal. If you are prioritizing any muscle, specializing on any muscle, and you're often training it when it's not fresh, and you're often after you train it, not giving it much time to heal before you hit it again, either as a synergist or as a prime mover, you're not doing the best job you can. As far as exercises, we can be completely honest with you guys. Any tricep exercise works really great. All of it comes down to stimulus to fatigue ratio, but a core of heavy extension movements, like sets of 10 to 20 in many cases, even sometimes five to 10, is what really grows big triceps in most cases. What I mean to say is if you want the biggest triceps possible, I wouldn't do like underhand one arm cable extensions in most cases, unless you can objectively demonstrate that your stimulus to fatigue ratio on that is just superior. Like if you get mind altering pumps from that crazy delayed onset soreness and your triceps just jump in strength all the time, if you're doing these fucking underhand shits, Hey, I'll shake your hand and you'll probably crush my hand with your enormous triceps. But the reality is that most of those exercises I don't know what to say other than a lot of times they're just attempts at being lazy and set, mailing in your training. Heavy skull crushers, heavy GM presses, heavy overhead extensions, heavy good pushdowns with two fucking hands and your palms here instead of your thumb limiting if you go underhand. That's the kind of shit that really grows you, not the little bullshit, nimby pimby stuff. And a lot of times the bullshit's what people want to sprinkle in because it's easy. Remember my ultimate example of how not to train your triceps to bring them up is to do the cable rope extension, even one arm will say, at the end of a workout. No, no, we want heavy extensions first. And of course, plenty of dips are often a good idea and supersetting a lot of extensions to close grip work or to dumbbell presses. So if you do some skull crushers, supersetting into close grip bench can be really awesome. An even better idea is doing some skull crushers or some pushdowns and some overhead extensions and supersetting them to dumbbell presses, incline or flat or shoulder press. Because with dumbbell presses, your chest can't help it's not a closed system. So if you have mechanically, you, if you turn your triceps off completely, like through the nervous system, you can still do a close grip bench just by using your chest because the there's no movement this way for your grip. So any movement here at, at, the, uh, at the humerus pushes the elbow this way and it has to extend. You can extend your arm with zero tricep involvement if it's a fixed point, like a barbell. If it's not a fixed point, like a dumbbell, you go one way this way, one way that way, your triceps have to turn on hard. So then all those dumbbell pressing movements you do as a superset after an extension movement are limited by the triceps almost exclusively. And you'll notice that because your pecs won't get a lot out of it. Your pecs can really turn on and help a lot in an, a, a machine or a barbell extension or a barbell press movement after an extension because they can sort of come in and do extra work. With dumbbells, they really can't do that. So dumbbells after some extensions is a really awesome way because sometimes just doing a bunch of extensions just doesn't hit you as hard as you want it to. And you end up doing eight sets of extensions. Like, what the fuck am I doing here? But if you do a set of extensions and then go right into a set of flat dumbbell press, 
full deep stretch and a full fucking lockout right around like rep number five over here. You're going to be like, holy balls, your triceps are going to be lit on fire. All right. So that's a really good idea to do. As far as set numbers, as always, start with two to six sets of tricep work per session. That's not that much. A lot of times people will make the mistake of saying, hey, man, tricep prioritization. I'm going to fucking hit it hard, bro. So they do 12 sets of triceps three days a week in their first week. What does that do? That fries the triceps to the bone. It damages them so much that it does two bad things. One, the direct damage actually causes a competition for recovery resources between healing you and growing you. You actually end up growing less. Fuck that. And two, that damage makes you so sore and so weak that it interferes with the amount of overload you can impose on the triceps in later sessions and even next week. So you like took a week of training and like if you were trying to get a manicure and you're like, oh, I got to get my nails look a little better. You just got a hammer and you're like, bam, <laughs> don't do that, right? Ease in. Two to six sets is not that many. But after you get a really good pump and a good feeling, you know, sore for a few days, then it heals. You go, oh, that was pretty good. And the next week you'll be able to do more and then more and then more and then more. And remember, the point is not to do a lot of sets. The point is to do the correct amount of sets that challenges you adequately and heals you just on time to do another hard workout. That's it. That's like uh, when you go to a restaurant, the point is not to eat as much food as possible. The point is to eat as much food as satiates you and gives you a really good time. Could be as much food as possible, but then uh, your priorities are all fucked up. So loading and reps. Generally speaking, there's only one recommendation here. Use the loading and rep ranges. Same, same. Two sides of the same coin. To get the best stimulus to fatigue ratios possible. The best pumps, the best burns, the best tension in the tricep. The best perturbation, like, oh, shit, my triceps are fucked up. They're cramping, doing weird stuff. The best delay in onset soreness, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that'll be different between different exercises, too. Some people get a ton of dips for sets of 10, but sets of 20, it's just kind of your shoulders start to get uh, really tired. And their triceps are like, eh. Skull crushers might be great for sets of 10 to 20. For 20 to 30, your forearms might actually just start burning. And then pushdowns might be amazing for sets of 20 to 25, even 30 reps. But if you do sets of eight with pushdowns, you're like, I don't know, man. Uh, it's just like heavy. The set takes like 10 seconds total. I don't feel like I'm doing enough work to actually justify a set. So it really depends on the exercise. So as far as king, what I will say is if you have heavier and lighter exercises in a session, let's say you're doing dips for sets of five to 10, skull crushers for sets of 10 to 15 in the same session, do the dips first. It's almost always a good idea to do the heavier stuff first because heavier stuff requires a shitload of neural recruitment and you can't go heavy if you're tired. But can you burn out a muscle with higher reps if you're tired? Yeah, hell yeah, you can. So remember that heavier almost always goes first. Lighter goes second. And uh, that means the conventional pyramiding thing where you do high reps first and then eventually you multiple sets later get to low reps is dumb as rocks and it's fucking backwards. I wouldn't do it. If you have a weekly structure, which you should, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, let's say, I would recommend going heavier early in the week because... What you do is you go heavier early in the week. Yes, your connective tissues will take a little bit of a beating, but you're fresh then. That's okay. By the end of the week, when you're going lighter, you're not asking much out of your connective tissues. For example, let's say you went lighter earlier in the week and your elbows are feeling a little weird. Now I'm asking you to go heavy later in the week with elbows that are already a little bit pre-fatigued. You might be into some pain and, and may, might not be able to do much. Now, if we flip that order and we do heavy first, your elbows will feel not so great maybe on Wednesday or Friday. But now I'm asking you to do light high rep stuff, which actually might make your elbows feel better. It's like a little bit of a rehab at that point and still gets you a great workout. And then you take the weekend off, you really, really heal and you go back to heavy. So it's kind of like heavy at the beginning of the week and lighter all the way through. It's backwards. I know. Ideally, if some kind of manhood shit, you want to do lighter and then heavier and heavier, bro. And the week on a high note, but you're not trying to end weeks on high notes. You're trying to grow muscle. We have to follow logical principles thereof. What about progress? We know we start with two to six sets, but where do we go from there? If you can heal on time so what you're no longer sore before your next tricep session and you feel really strong again, you can add like something like one set to that session equivalent next week. So if Monday you train triceps, you train them again on Wednesday and by Wednesday you were completely healed, no soreness, and you felt really fucking strong. Let's say that, that Monday you did four sets. Next time you could do five sets. If you barely just healed on time for that Wednesday, and you felt strong, but you were like, dude, if it was three hours difference of a workout, I wouldn't have felt as strong. Don't increase sets, period. <sighs> if you're just barely recovered, never add sets. If you're well recovered and you're like, I could do way more and benefit, add a few sets and see how it goes. So what you don't do is you're not trying to add sets. You're seeing how your workout goes. And if your workout's a little too easy, add a few sets or just add one set, see how it goes. Next week's a little too easy, add another set. 
then usually you get into a groove where workouts are great and you're not adding a whole lot of sets. And that's close to your maximum adaptive volume right there. Reps in reserve, as always, or almost always, start with like three reps in reserve in the first week and then increase load and or reps, five pounds here, 10 pounds here, a rep here, two reps there over the weeks to make sure that you're getting closer and closer to failure until your planned failure point or one or zero reps in reserve is hit in that last week before you deload. And that's it. And the entire time you're trying to beat your rep performance or load performance just by a tiny smidge. I can't repeat this any more than I already have. Little tiny PRs week after week are the lifeblood of massive muscles and massive strength levels after some time. The idea of putting a shitload of weight on the bar, like week one, you do skull crushers with 100 pounds. And week two, you're like, fuck yeah, 115. Uh-uh-uh-uh. Not a good idea. You should do 105 and then 110 and then 115. But also you can raise your reps during that time if it's really too easy. And then it's sustainable. Your elbows aren't hurt. Your ego's not hurt. You could do that again in another month. And all of a sudden you're doing 130 for skull crushers and you have fucking big triceps. As opposed to going 100, 115, 120 doesn't go that well. You're actually weaker because you went way too far with 115. You have to recycle, deload, and then you don't even know where you are. Little tiny additions are almost always good so that your reps in reserve drop by like one every week. Three are in the first week, then two, then one, then zero, then deload. All right. What does that look like? So that's a lot of theory. What does that look like? Here is a tricep training program. You could try. You could try doing this verbatim. Uh, but remember, it's not the program. It's just a program. So there's many ways to skin a cat. As I always say, the cat hates all the ways, unless it's a really, really masochistic cat. Then he might like it. Uh, by the way, free promo to metrics, RTD 51, because it has 51 grams of protein. That's an interesting advertising strategy. Uh, two grams of carbohydrate and two grams of fat. Not bad. And it tastes like, Oh, fuck, God. It coats the throat with I don't know what. It's a fine drink. It's a fine drink. It works. It was on sale at Meyer. What do you guys want? All right. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, we train triceps in this plan. Let me tell you guys about the RP Hypertrophy app. With over 28 preset programs already in the app, you can choose to make your own, you can modify an existing program, or you can just run the programs exactly as they were written by me personally. This app programs everything for you. Exercises, weights, sets, reps, frequency, the whole thing. After every single workout on every single week, the app adjusts to your unique parameters with every single input. We have over 250 exercises in the app with detailed video tutorial links to every single one. You never have to be confused about technique or form ever again. I'm guessing right now you're pretty interested in the app? Download the RP Hypertrophy app today. Tuesday, we start with barbell skull crushers, just like Dad did them just like grandpa did them. You guys remember those photos your your grandpa showed you from the um, Civil War? Uh Uh-huh. Your great grandpa was doing skull crushers in that motherfucker. Big ass triceps. Slap General Lee across the face. Backhand slap. Holy. It's a lot of bone there. Bam. In any case, barbell skull crushers for two sets of five to 10 reps. That's heavy, but for many people, that's right in the money. Barbell skull crushers again. Sometimes when we put out our Team Full ROM programs to our Team Full ROM training group on Facebook and Instagram, you guys can find us. There's probably links below to, to sign up. Uh, we'll do barbell skull crushers, barbell skull crushers, and people will be like, is that a typo? Nope. It's downsets. So you do barbell skull crushers, five to 10 reps at three RIR, and then you lower the weight and do them for sets of 10 to 15 reps. A lot of times, that can check a few boxes. One, it checks your heavy training box, which is sweet. And another one is, After you go heavy, if you go light after with the same exercise, you're so grooved in, you're so potentiated for that exercise that that light work feels amazing and you're super strong even on that light work. So sometimes a downset is, or a few downsets is is everything the doctor ordered. And then after that, you go to incline close grip bench. So this routine we designed to put triceps on the front burner and pecs on the back burner. So you won't need any other pec days for this. This is all of your pushing work. Incline close grip bench for two sets, 10 to 15 reps at the end, three reps in reserve of that Tuesday workout. Should be right here. Uh, Look, that's not going to get your chest a whole lot bigger, probably not any bigger, but it will maintain it, which is awesome. It's all we need. And because it's inclined close grip, 
oh my God, your triceps are already pre-fatigued. It's just more like hammer bashing your triceps. This is going to be, this is a tough routine. Thursday. Okay. We know that our triceps have multiple ways of working, multiple heads, and they work best from different angles. So we're going to go overhead on Thursday. And that's partially by design because we're going to go back to a different plane of motion later on, on uh, Saturday. But we sort of want some variation. We don't want to hammer the same structures over and over and over. We want to give them a break. So all, all of our work was like this and like this. On Tuesday, on Thursday, all of our work is going to be overhead and then more horizontal. So we're avoiding the exact same angles day after day after day. So easy bar overhead extensions for two sets of five to 10 reps. Again, easy bar overhead extensions, down sets for another two sets of 10 to 15 reps. Amazing. Should have really pumped triceps by then. And then check it out. As we were talking about earlier, flat dumbbell presses for two sets of 10 to 20 reps, really fries the triceps, helps the pecs grow or maintain a little bit. Awesome stuff. These are all programs I've done in the past and they've worked tremendously well. I have like gigantic arms as far as I can tell, but my biceps aren't that big because my triceps are fucking insane and I owe it all to this kind of bullshit. You know, he's like me patting myself on, on my head. Good job, Mike. You have big triceps. Yay. Saturday, we start with weighted dips because yeah, for some people, they work really, really well. Weighted dips for triceps are kind of like squats are for quads in a certain sense. Some people do better with leg extensions and, and leg presses and hack squats, but good old fashioned high bar squats are fucking awesome. And good old fashioned weighted dips can fuck your triceps up in a big way, especially if you go deep. And especially if many of our technique videos recommend, instead of pushing your chest forward and really doing this, staying upright and really bending at the elbow puts a crazy stretch on the triceps at the bottom of the movement. Amazing stuff. Weighted dips for three sets of 10 to 15 reps. I'm assuming you're strong here. Enjoy. After that, you do a drop set or drop sets, three drop sets of cable pushdowns, which means you basically get in there. And there's a couple ways to do this. One is you could just do drop sets the entire time. So you do, uh, you know, a set of 100 or sorry, a set of, you know, 20 reps. Uh, what is that? 10 to 20, a set of 20 reps at 100. You go down to 75, you do a set of another, whatever, how many you can do, three reps in reserve, and you go down to 65 and you do another one, another set. You could do it like that. Or these can be drop sets that are within, sort of clustered within each set. So three sets here could mean you do 100 for 20, and then you do 60 for, let's say, 10. You rest. Okay, you did one drop set situation. You rest for a normal time, two minutes or whatever, until all the four-factor checkboxes are, are done. And then you go and you do another set of drop set. So it's two and two and two. That's three sets. That's brutal. Interpret this any way you like. You can try one or the other. Just make sure to do them consistently. After that, weighted dips got the heavy shit done. Cable push down drop sets got the light shit done. Your triceps are fried. And then you do deficit close grip pushups. OMG, tricep destruction and your pecs get hit pretty well. This program if you try it, you had better have a really good volume tolerance for triceps to begin with. I'll put it to you this way. If I was doing this exact program, I would take a set off of the priority here and there. I actually can't survive a program like that unless I'm weeks into training and I'm really used to it. Right offhand, I can't fucking do this because it's way too much for me. So be careful. Now, these volumes will change. So what happens with multiple weeks of adding sets, multiple weeks of adding weight, and multiple weeks of reducing how many reps in reserve getting close to failure? It could look, it could look something like this just for you guys as a viewing pleasure. So barbell skull crushers, we started at four sets and four sets, or sorry, we started at two sets and two sets in the first week. Final week we deload, we could be doing four sets for each one. Incline close grip bench started at two sets, could be three sets at the end. How come we didn't increase more for incline close grip? Because we're on purpose not trying to increase a lot of chest work, mostly increasing on the triceps. Uh, uh, it's a tricep program. Two sets and two sets for easy overhead tricep extension in the first week. In the last week, four sets and three sets. Flat dumbbell presses go on that day and that Thursday from two sets to three sets. Again, same pattern. We don't want to increase chest work a ton. For Saturday, weighted dips start at three sets, cable pushdowns at three sets, and then deficit close grip pushups at two sets. And then so, so it's three, three, two, and it ends up at four, five, three. That five is because a lot of times drop sets, you fatigue so much set to set to set that adding uh, more and more drop sets doesn't fatigue you that much more or give you that much more of a stimulus. It does a little bit, but you have to do a lot more additions. Like if your third set was 80 pounds for a set of six and your first set was 100 pounds for a set of 20, 
at adding another set of 70 for a set of five drop set, it just does not that much more work. It's not like adding a, another set when you're super fresh and rested. So drop sets, you can often add more. That doesn't mean you should try to add more. It's just through auto-regulation, you realize like, oh, if I added a set, it wouldn't be that much of a deal. All right. That's the program. Next question, one of the last. How long to specialize for? Ideally, you want to specialize for a training block, which means three mesocycles, increases for several weeks, a three to five week increase, deload. That's one mesocycle. Ideally, you would do three of those stacked together, triceps, triceps, triceps. Start with twice a week tricep training in the first one, then go to three times a week, then go to four times a week. Your triceps and elbows and shoulders are trash by the end of that. You take an active rest phase or a low volume maintenance phase, and you come back and you can either train the rest of your body normally, triceps normally, take another specialization, you're specializing on chest now or quads now, or you can do another tricep specialization program. As long as you take that either active rest for two weeks after or a low volume resensitization phase for four weeks after one of those blocks, three mesocycles of tricep training, you can eliminate so much fatigue after those that you can do another block after that. So you can just perpetually prioritize your triceps, turn into Kevin Lavrone, Google that and be like, holy fuck, the hell happened to his triceps? Mostly genetics. As you go from one mesocycle to another in that specialization phase, you may choose to lighten the loads a little bit or rather not lighten the loads. Do more of your training in the higher rep ranges because as you increase frequency from two to three to four times a week, your ability to recover joint and connective tissue wise day to day to day may drop considerably because the days are more frequent. So you might start doing lots of sets of five to 10 in the second meso, mostly sets of 10 to 20 in the last meso, many sets of 20 to 30 so that you're not relying on your elbow integrity much anymore because it's just not there anymore. Then you take an active rest phase or you take a low volume resensitization phase, everything heals up, elbow, shoulders, and you can go back to heavy training a little bit less frequently in that next run. You can change exercises when you feel like an exercise will get you a better stimulus to fatigue ratio than the alternative. So what does that mean really? That means if I'm doing overhead tricep extensions and they're just going unfucking believably, I don't take them out. I do a whole meso cycle with them. And after the meso, I think about it. Huh, should I do these again? Well, my pumps towards the end were amazing. My elbows didn't hurt at all. I love the exercise. The mind-muscle connection is awesome. Fuck it. I'm keeping it in. Whereas if you had some cable pushdowns and towards the end, they felt kind of like, meh, you kind of weren't connecting with them and your elbows kind of hurt a little bit and you weren't getting super great pumps and it took you a lot of sets to actually get anything to work, then maybe you take them out and you replace them with some other alternatives. Hmm, yeah, JM presses look pretty cool. I remember trying them and they felt great. I'm going to try them on my deload and see how it goes. So that way, exercise deletion and replacement occurs more naturally, sort of more organically, in the sense that when you need to delete and replace an exercise, you do based on it has a better SFR. And if you don't, you keep it in. A lot of times people ask the question of like, should I rotate my exercises every time I do a new mesocycle? Every six weeks, should I do new exercises? And the, well, that question is only answered yes. If you, you're saying, well, there's an exercise here that's really low in SFR now, and I can do a much better job stimulus to fatigue ratio wise if I choose another exercise. If that exercise is still golden for you, fuck, man, you can do an exercise for eight months straight and not bad a fucking guy. Voila. That's it. That's all we got. Now, you may have watched this video and go, holy shit, that's a lot of information, but how do I build my own program or how do I learn more about this? We have some links in the description for you, and I will tell you about a few of them. First, we have a free exercise video library where tons of exercises program usually, or sorry, uh, demonstrated by uh, IFBB pro Jared Feather. So those look really cool. You can see like, what the fuck is an overhead easy bar tricep extension? What is he talking about the whole time? Click on the video. Oh, okay. And I'm actually in the, you turn off the volume. I'm in the background talking through the exercise, describing how to do it. It's really simple videos. Each one's like 30 seconds long. Yet you go on on the right technique. We have a muscle group training guide where it's basically all the stuff I said, except broken down into a million pieces with super high level of detail and complexity. That's on the RP website. We'll link it right in. So it's all the muscle groups there, triceps, biceps, chest, et cetera, all have their own guide. Each one's like 10 pages long. Frequency, volume, uh, exercises, modalities, all that stuff is in there. So if you're really like, wow, before I try to prioritize my triceps, I really want to learn a shitload about how triceps work and how to best train them and all the exercises I could use. Read those articles and holy fuck, you'll, you'll be way ahead of the game. If you need a refresher course on some of these terms and on the general principles of training, because you're like, what the, he keeps saying SFR. What the fuck is that? Hypertrophy Made Simple, linked below, 16 videos or something like that. Each one of them is like eight minutes long. Tells you about sets and reps and failure and rest times and stimulus and fatigue so that you can understand all the stuff that's made super simple so you can get you going 
and get you growing triceps, which because that's clearly the important thing to do in your life. If you want to learn a shitload more at a very deep level, we have the hypertrophy book, Scientific Principles of Hypertrophy Training, co-authored by myself, Jared Feather, Melissa Davis, and James Hoffman. And that's a sweet book. It's super, super highly in-depth. It's hundreds of pages long, tons of citations and all this other crap. And it's not free, but it's cheap. All right. See, I got you hooked up. Can't do free, but I can do cheap. If all this sounds really great and you want to build your own program, but you're like, fuck, man, you know, Microsoft Excel, is that how people build programs? I want a real custom program. What am I supposed to do? Do I just make it on my iPhone notes program? We have our custom training template builder program. It's a hundred bucks for you to build a six week routine from our website. And it's downloaded as an Excel file for you. Thing is though, it's not a hundred bucks for six weeks. It gives you a routine that you designed. You tell us which muscles you want to train. So you will say, I want to train five days a week and I want to put triceps on specialization. There's actually a button you can press specialization for triceps. Put all the other muscles that you want. The program gets turned into you and you can drop down all the exercises you want to use. And thus you can use it for six weeks and then use it again for six weeks and use it again for six weeks, altering the exercises and the rep ranges a little bit to your liking. So if you want a tricep program that lasts for 18 weeks, the entire three mesocycles stacked together, you can buy that for just a hundred bucks. And if you ever want to come back to it a year later, it's still there and you can use it again. So yes, it's a hundred bucks for a six weeks program, but that lasts you way more than six weeks. If you want, it can last you 18, 24, 36, all those number of weeks. So it's pretty sweet. In any case, all that stuff is below. So is the like button. So is the subscribe button. Hit that shit. If you guys want to know tons more stuff and get access to much more in-depth insight and early releases and special releases of videos you don't get on the main channel, consider subscribing to our membership shit, which should have like a join button somewhere around here. And it's fun. It's a party. So come join us, folks. Thank you so much. See you next time.